I am in search of something this year. Something. You get the intro, you've heard it like four times. Anyway, this is the conclusion to White Ink Month, where I'm going to create and build the ultimate white ink pen. And oh boy, this is gonna be fun. So let's dig in. Behold, is this the ultimate white ink pen? We'll find out. So I wanna take you through the process that I went through. First off, I also want to thank you for watching all the way up to the ultimate conclusion for White Ink Month. You know, we did four videos. We did one taking a break of the Zebra Found Brush Pen. You're seeing why because I'm using it right now. Uh, this has been a very fun video series that I'm doing and it really has been one where I've enjoyed the process and I really pushed myself as an artist and learned new techniques. So, yay for that. Now, to make this pen, I actually went through several different processes where I did custom ink mixes. Now if you watch Battle Loot, I actually purchased a syringe and a special ink needle so that I could make loading pens and mixing inks much easier. So if you guys are a fan of Battle Loot, you probably saw that already. But I used this to do all my ink mixes, to do tests, and to fill my pens. So. Let's go over mix number one. This was my first batch where I mixed just Bleed Proof White Ink and Bombay White Ink. And let me tell you something, that was the worst decision I ever made because guess what? When you open it and you mix them for like a minute, they mix together and then they basically coagulate, like they turn to foam. It's really weird. And you can even see like it instantly like hardened. I, was, I wasn't expecting that. But okay, that was test number one. So after doing my first batch, I did a second batch. This was just the India White Ink mixed with water. Now one thing I learned is that it becomes too watery to use in a pen, and it's too watery to actually use. Now, maybe I made the water mixtures off, but I did try a few blends. This was the one that worked the best. So uh, batch number two did not work. So right now we're two failing. So then I did a mini batch, batch number three, which was the Bleed Proof White Ink. Now this was currently my favorite ink. This is still my favorite ink. But unfortunately, it doesn't work in pens because it's way too thick. And guess what? If you mix it with water, it still coagulates a little bit, but it's also still too thick and too like rich to actually be in a pen. So batch number three failed. Batch number four was an interesting experiment as I took some Bombay White Ink, mixed it with Bleed Proof White Ink, but before I mixed them, I added water to the solution to try and keep it from coagulating. And, well, I'll be honest with you guys, it really didn't do much. This was just not, just not my day. These, these inks did not want to mix, they did not want to exist. After four failed attempts, I went back to the drawing board and I really examined what I needed to do. So then, I found a blend that kind of worked. It was a little bit of both. However, I included some Uniball ink. I actually, not this one, but I tore one apart and then used the needle to actually get and extract the ink out. And then I mixed it together, a little bit of water, and just a dab of this one, mostly these two. And they mixed really well. So I found that, you know what, it looks like it will work with a pen. I tried a test pen and it worked really well. So then I started constructing my pen. So I took apart the zebra brush pen and we actually have some B footage. I took it apart, I cleaned it, I went through it, I examined and just went through and just cleaned and scrubbed and I used soap and hot water. I really cleaned the sucker out. I even went in with a Dremel tool and extracted and drilled out parts of the end of it so that it'd be easier to load with ink. I reassembled the pen, I put it back together. I really took time to learn how this pen works. So after I assembled this pen, I then decided to fill it with ink. And let me show you what the fruits of my labor showed you because batch number five is messy, very inconsistent, And 
bleeds through the back of the pen. Not only is it inconsistent and messy, but it only lasts like five seconds and it bleed everywhere, including in the spring, so it actually like gunks this up so you can't close it right and you can't open it easy. This, uh, yeah, batch number five, it didn't work, <laughs> at least in this pen. And I tried to build, you know, my own thing. I love this pen, I tried, but didn't work. So after not just four, but five failed batches of mixing custom inks, and on top of that, failure in making a ink pen, I went online and I purchased this pen. Now, again, if you are watching Battle Loot, you not only knew that I picked up this, but I also picked up this very nice fountain pen. Uh, this is about $8. I think now it's at 15 on Amazon. Very reasonable price. And I filled it with the white ink that I mixed, and I felt like that one worked really well. It was just maybe I messed the pen up. I just didn't assemble it correctly. And you can even see that I did already put some white ink in it. It permanently stained the white steel of the pen. And after testing with it and making possibly the biggest mess I ever have, because look at my hands, they're still covered in ink, I decided that this isn't working. And I filled it with black ink. Yeah. Yeah, I broke the rules. I just decided that, you know what, this is a nice pen. I'm not going to destroy it anymore with my crazy experiments. I'm just going to fill it with black ink and use it for nice stuff. Maybe when I have to do calligraphy. I don't know. But yeah, this was a big pain in the butt to fill with white ink and I permanently damaged it. In fact, I'm actually going to show you guys that I'm not BSing you. Like it really was filled with white ink and now it's filled with black ink. You can even see it like right here. Like this is a nice pen. Look at that. That's nice. The only thing I would change is the mechanism to actually like refill it when it starts to run a little low. Besides that, this is a great pen and I'm mad that I permanently stained it even though it does highlight the nice detail on it. Uh, this is a really nice pen that I'm mad I permanently stained in this weird experiment I was trying to do to figure out how to make the ultimate white ink pen. So yeah, uh, I failed guys. <laughs> I hardcore failed. But you know what? I learned how to reassemble, tear apart, and construct a zebra fountain pen. I learned what different mixtures do to inks. And I also learned the interesting bits of coagulation, too watery, and the fact that you could still salvage pens when you mess up with them really bad through cleaning and, well, a lot of hot water. Ultimately, this was a fun experiment, and I did fail. But I learned a lot from my failures, and I'm proud of it. I really did have fun trying to figure out how this worked. It was frustrating it didn't work, and I feel bad that I really tried to build up this idea, and I felt so confident in my initial ideas and, well, plan, but it failed, so I feel kind of bad. But to make up for it, I do have something for you guys. So this is an illustration that I've done of a dragon. This is one I've really been wanting to do for a while. I did some rough sketches in my Cthulhu sketchbook and I really like how they came out. And then I penciled in the finished sketch and the finished design. And I was going to illustrate this and fully ink it with the ultimate white ink pen, which doesn't exist. So to make up for it, I'm just gonna use a combination of all four through some small or big way, that's what I'm gonna do because you guys came all this way to watch me try and build the ultimate white ink pen and I failed. So why not just make something cool out of it and see what we can do? So let's row that B footage.
and it's done. This piece, I gotta say, is probably my favorite piece I have done this entire month. Out of all of them, this was the one that I had a lot of fun doing, and to be honest, it's probably my strongest silhouette that I've done. It's something I've always struggled with and I want to get better at, and that's really what part of this month was to do, was to get better at it. And you know what? I like it. I think I succeeded. I think I did good. And just like all the drawings I've done this month, they are available for purchase. One dollar will get you a digital download on my ArtStation account. And the link to that will be in the description down below. As always, it's the top link under my little catchphrase. So, let's put this drawing aside and let's talk about what this month entold. This month entold a lot of trial and error, a lot of failure, but you know what? I had a ton of fun. I feel like I really pushed my craft further and got better as an artist. I feel like I've learned a lot. And even though I did clickbait you guys with the title, and I am a little sorry about that, I still learned just a lot throughout the experience. And in my opinion, that is worth doing the theme month, you know, learning and growing as an artist. So now with that said, I want to know if you guys learned anything, if you guys enjoyed the theme month, and if you did, I might do it again, and we'll do something cool, something different, something unique, maybe something with Sharpies, I'm open to feedback. So let me know what you guys think, uh, let me know what you guys think of the arc itself, if you like it, if you think it's good, or if it sucked, I would love your feedback on that. Also check out ArtStation, follow me on Instagram for our work I don't post on YouTube because I don't have enough time to make a video. Or you can also hit me up on Gmail if you got some commissions and all that fun jazz because always taking advice and taking suggestions from my viewers. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about everything and I will be preparing for the next batch of videos. We'll be getting some really cool animation going on on the channel for once and we'll be just pushing our craft further beyond because that's what ultimately being an artist to me is about is pushing yourself further and becoming a better artist. So I'm Battle Brawler and I draw with power in my own soul. Let me know if you guys do that too.